Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Something I've been going over for the past few weeks in this channel is when companies nowadays uh, just decided to take away more and more of your freedom via forced arbitration. And one of the ways that they get you to agree to forced arbitration is by changing the terms of the sale after you purchase the product and not allowing you to use the product until you agree to the new terms. This is something that is starting to become more common where companies change the terms after the sale and then lock you out of the ability to use your product. I talked about this when it came to Roku and their televisions. You would get this that would show up on your screen, and you may notice here that there is no button to disagree. You purchase the television with particular terms, and then they just decide to change them. And if you got that screen, you may have noticed when you use your remote and you try to change to a different source, you can't. They literally disabled your ability to use your television unless you agree to forced arbitration, which in my opinion is kind of rapey. You need to make sure that your consumers consent to this before they buy the item. And this is becoming more and more commonplace nowadays. And this is something that happened with a cloud hosting provider now, very recently. And they did it in what I believe is kind of a, a sneaky and shitty way. This is from Volter, V-U-L-T-R. This is a pretty much a cloud host. You get cloud storage, cloud compute, all this type of stuff. They have a bunch of interesting services. And when you take a look at the terms of service, there's something that's been in here for quite a while that's fairly surprising. You hereby grant Volter a non-exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, royalty-free, fully paid up worldwide license, including the right to sub-license, to use, reproduce, process, adapt, publicly perform, publicly display, modify, prepare derivative works, publish, transmit, and distribute each of your user content, or any portion thereof in any form, medium, or distribution method now known or hereafter existing, known or developed, and otherwise use or commercialize the user content in any way that Volter deems appropriate, without any further consent, notice, and slash or compensation to you or third parties. So it's funny, again, you know, like when I put my data on a server that I'm paying for, I thought that was my data, but apparently it's yours. If I put software up here, scripts up here, anything that I've written, apparently it's yours. Now again, to be clear, I am an advocate on this channel for open source software. I like open source software. This computer runs an open source operating system. I am recording this very video with an open source piece of software. But the difference here is that the programmers of this software and this operating system System and everything that I'm using have consented to this. And that's the key word. This is the word that is missing in many of these uh, agreements is the concept of consent. You need to get consent before you do this. And this is not one of the ways that I think is a great way to do it. And there is a giant Reddit thread on this, which has received 1500 plus upvotes going over this. Now, to be clear, the devil is in the details. The person who posted this thread is saying, look, they have new terms of service. This is new. This is something that they just released. And that was technically not true. Somebody pointed out, if you scroll all the way down, you find a post that was made by Ad Axis. They go over this and demonstrate that this terms of service is actually from December of 2023 and that this uh, this change actually happened uh, quite a while ago and this is also something where if you scroll up this terms of service was released in January. So why is it that people are freaking out now? Because I've received no less than three emails about this. Well, the reason people are freaking out now is they signed up for the hosting provider under one terms of service and it was only over the past few days that people started to get this. It says terms of service, Volta terms of service has been updated. Please review the new terms of service here confirm you have accepted the new terms of updated terms of service to proceed so it's very likely that these individuals signed up prior to the terms of service being written like this now why is this message so offensive this message is offensive because you can't log it to your account until you hit confirm Similar to the Roku television where I literally cannot change the source to a different HDMI source on my television and actually watch something until I had accepted the new terms of service, somebody who may have signed up in 2021 when the terms were again, not what I'd like, but at the very least a little bit more lenient and sane, now has to deal with this particular terms of service or they cannot get access to their account. This is also something that happened with Blizzard recently where they changed their terms of service for forced arbitration and after they did that, users were not able to essentially log in and cancel their account. They were using privacy.com credit cards and deleting them so that they could stop paying Blizzard. When you have a system that literally requires that I, I accept your terms of service in order to get access to what I was already paying paying for when I, I agreed to pay for that under a different terms of service, in my opinion, that is again, end user license agreement roofing. You know, you're, you're claiming that you got consent, Technically, I said yes, but I said yes under circumstances where I wouldn't usually say yes, and you fucking know that. Again, the, a cloud hosting provider 
that's saying that they can anything I upload, they can use however they want, however they see fit, and create any sort of derivative work without paying me, without my consent? Fuck you. I don't know what else to say there. If you use this hosting provider, again, to be clear, in the details, the post that I'm linking to is not fully technically correct. They changed this terms of service a few months ago, not now. In my opinion, while accuracy is important, that does not make this any better. Making it so you cannot get into your account until you agree is rapey. More importantly, assuming that you, ha again, this is the, this, that sneaking the tip in behavior where you changed the terms of service a few months ago and you, you genuinely believe that you have the ability to use my work however you see fit without asking me and make money off of it? No, 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 no. None of this nonsense. Uh, you know, and this is one of those things where you just kind of wonder, uh, is what they're doing essentially making money to train AI based on your data? And again, to be clear, I have no problem if somebody uses my public videos, my public posts on forums to train any sort of AI. That's fair game because I've made it available publicly. If it's made available publicly, I believe that people have the right to learn off of it. But this is private. This is on my private server. Uh, you don't have the right to train shit based on what is in my drawer in my house that is locked. And if I'm paying for a server, I just do not think that that is a moral or ethical thing to do. And something that I think would be very useful for you, for people, uh, is, again, for me, I have been using some of these uh, large language models to actually read these end-user license agreements. I know there are people in my comments that claim that they read the 54-page or 900-page end-user license agreements. You're liars. You're all liars. No, you don't. No, you don't. When you install an operating system, you do not read the 900-page terms of service in EULA. You don't. You're a liar. Nobody believes you. I don't believe you. You don't do it. Uh, but if you use one of these large language models, usually I use the prompt of, for X system, I want you to use your knowledge of this industry as well as what are common practice terms of service and end-user license agreements in this industry and what is friendly for consumers, something like that, and what is not friendly to consumers. Uh, what is, you know, what's the norm and what is, well, what is uh, out of the norm? I want you to read this contract. So control P, save as a PDF, send it to it, and I'll say read this document and tell me if any of these terms of service are either abusive to the customer, something that goes against my in interest, or something that is radically different from the terms of service anywhere else. And it will actually tell me a lot of this, and it's very, very good at it. Like if you put this in into ChatGPT, immediately what it will tell you is uh, unilateral modification of terms, they reserve the right to change, update, add room provisions, broad intellectual property rights claim, this clause granting Volter a non-exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, royalty-free, fully paid up worldwide license to use, reproduce, process, adapt, publicly perform, display, modify, prepare derivative works, publish, transmit, and distribute uh, user content. While it's common for cloud providers to require some licensing rights to operate and distribute user content through their services, the breadth and permanence of the rights claim here go beyond typical industry norms. Most providers limit their rights to narrowly what is necessary to provide the services. And it goes on to continue about all of this. It's, it, it's very useful to me and it's actually stopped me from signing up for services that I otherwise would have signed up for. With this service, what's your knowledge of every other service in this industry? What is non-standard about this terms of service, if anything, and considered abuses to the customer? And I think that this is going to be really important because again, who the hell has the time to read 900 pages of this? And if large language models and generative AI are good at actually reading through all this shit and telling me how I'm being abused, that's great. This is another example of this tool actually being useful to me in a way that uh, protects my rights as a consumer. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Again, they changed the terms of service months ago. It wasn't changed immediately. What do you think about this message going out immediately? What do you think about people not getting access to their account unless they accept the new terms of service? And what do you think about this ballsy terms of service to begin with, where they assume that they have ownership over your data, the ability to monetize it, use it, distribute it as they see fit without ever compensating you? Would you ever pay for this cloud hosting provider? Because I sure as fuck wouldn't. And I'm actually about to look to every single one of my hosting providers, go put their terms of service into something like this and ask it, am I getting wrecked? because I think that that's an important thing to do. I am stunned at how many companies all at the same time whether just think that they can just change the terms after the sale and get away with it with this type of abusive terms. And if we don't stop it now, again, like I say with right to repair, we're going to see it everywhere. Uh, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.